Hello everyone. Welcome to Learn Payments channel. This video is an introduction to payment cards cryptography. This video is split into three chapters. In the first chapter, we will look at basics of cryptography, which is common across all the industries, not specific to payments. We will look at what is symmetric key cryptography, what is asymmetric key cryptography, and what is a HSM. In the second chapter, we will cover some important terminologies about payment specific cryptography, which includes data encrypting keys, key encrypting keys, and what is a zone, etc. In the third chapter, we will look at some important keys like the CVC keys, pin keys, etc. Now let's look at general cryptography techniques. First, what is cryptography or data obfuscation? Data obfuscation is the process of protecting sensitive information by converting them into some unreadable format. Let's take an example. You see a card number there and I do not want to store or have the card number in clear. So I will encrypt this card number into an unreadable format as shown here. So this process of storing the data or protecting the data is called as data obfuscation. Data obfuscation has many techniques. Broadly, I have categorized into two which is encryption and second is masking. So what is encryption? Encryption is a reversible process. That is a two way process. We can encrypt the data into an unreadable format and the unreadable format can be restored to a original format or the original data. So this process of encryption and decryption of data is one way of protecting sensitive information. Whereas the second method, which is masking, is an irreversible process where the data is obfuscated into an unreadable format and we cannot restore back that unreadable data into its original contents. There are multiple techniques of doing it like hashing or just brute force replacement of uh, data masking, etc. We are more interested about encryption in the current video, which is used in payment card cryptography. The masking like techniques are generally used when we transfer data from production environments to a testing environments, etc. Which is not of real interest in this video. So we will look at what are different encryption techniques. There are two major types of encryptions. First is symmetric key encryption or cryptography and second is asymmetric key cryptography. I've used the words cryptography and encryption interchangeably. Cryptography is a general science, whereas encryption is a specific process. So both sort of relate to the same thing. So I'm using the words cryptography and encryption interchangeably. Since we are using this key, the word key a lot of times, let's look at what is a key. A key is a secret text which contains a random set of characters, like in a specific order. So this is very important to encrypt a particular data. So this key is something that is used to encrypt the original contents of the data. A sample key looks like this. There are many components of a key like the key length, etc., key format, etc. I'm not going uh, into all of those. I'm just saying that key is a secret text which is used to encrypt a particular data. Now let us look at what is symmetric key cryptography. Symmetric key cryptography means that the sender of the data and the receiver of the data both share the same key. Let's say the sender wants to send some data to the receiver. The sender encrypts the data to be sent using the shared key and then creates a cipher text. This cipher text is transmitted to the receiver. The receiver then uses this shared key and then restores the original data from the cipher content. So this process of encryption is called symmetric key cryptography, where both the sender and the receiver use the same key. As you might have guessed, in asymmetric key cryptography, the sender and the receiver use two different keys. The sender has a copy of a key which can only encrypt data. It, it cannot decrypt the data. Whereas receiver has a key which is called as a private key, which can be used to decrypt the data. So the sender's key is generally referred to as public key, which is used to encrypt, whereas the receiver has a private key, which can be used to decrypt the data. 
So let's see what happens when a sender wants to send some data to the receiver in case of asymmetric key cryptography. The sender uses the public key to encrypt the original data and then creates a ciphertext and transmits the data to the receiver. The receiver uses the private key and then restores the original content from the ciphertext. So this method of cryptography is called as asymmetric key cryptography. In payment cards, we use both symmetric and asymmetric key cryptographies. Some of the use cases in payment cards are like generation and validation of CVC, which is printed up on the back of the card or the magnetic stripe, generation and validation of pin numbers, and within the EMV chip card data, the data is stored using the asymmetric key cryptography, etc. And the cryptogram validation is also done using symmetric key cryptography. So these are different use cases within payment cards where cryptography is used. The next important thing is called as HSM. HSM is a hardware security module. It's a device. It's a tamper resistant device, which is used to store keys, generate keys, perform all the encryption, the decryption that we scopes that we spoke of earlier. This HSM also connects to payment applications or the transaction switches for performing cryptographic functions. Now let us look at some basic terminologies in cryptography pertaining to payments. In payments, in general, the keys can be classified into two classes. First one is called data encrypting keys. Second one is called as key encrypting keys. Data encrypting keys, as the name suggests, are used to encrypt data which is to be sent between two parties. Data encrypting keys are also used to generate cryptograms like CVC or PIN or ARQC, etc. So these type of keys which are used to encrypt or generate a particular cryptographic data are called data encrypting keys. Key encrypting keys are keys which are used to encrypt the keys and store. So when we have a key like the CVC key or the PIN key or anything like that, we do not store that particular key in clear in the key database or the key store as it is called. We store them encrypted under a different key. So those keys which are used to encrypt the keys are called as key encrypting keys. Let us take an example to understand a data encrypting key and a key encrypting key. Let's say a bank wants to send a pin mailer to a customer. These days we all get green pins, but generally a pin mailer is a letter that we get from the bank which contains the pin number for a given card number. So let's say the bank engages a pin printing vendor to send the pin mailer. Both the bank and the pin printing vendor share a common pin encrypting key. So let's say a bank generates a pin 1579 for a given card and it needs to transmit that pin to a pin printing vendor. In which case the bank uses this pin encrypting key and then generates a pin block and then sends that pin block to the pin printing vendor. The pin printing vendor then decrypts the original pin and then prints on the paper and then mails it to the customer. So these sort of keys which are used to encrypt data are called as data encrypting keys. Pin encryption key is one such an example of a data encrypting key. So as I mentioned, let's take the same example of a pin encrypting key. The same pin encrypting key is not stored in clear. The issuers have their own master keys, typically called as local master keys, which is a key encrypting key. So when storing that pin encrypting key that we spoke in the previous slide, the pin encrypting key is encrypted under this local master key and then stored on the database. Every single key in an environment, in a bank's environment, is stored under a master key. So those master keys are called as key encrypting keys. Lastly, I want to just cover an important terminology called as a zone. We all know that in payments environments, there are a lot of parties involved. In a typical transaction flow, we know that there is terminal, terminal to acquirer, acquirer to scheme, scheme to issuer. A trusted link between any two parties is called as a zone. So let's say terminal and acquirer form a zone. Acquirer and scheme form a zone. Scheme and issuer form a zone. We will see the importance of a zone in the next section where we look at some keys specific to zones. This completes the section 2 where we look at some payment cryptographic related terminologies. 
Now let's look at few keys in the payments environment. I'm only covering few keys in this particular section. There are a lot of other keys that are involved in payment cards. We will look at in the subsequent videos. So in this video, I'm going to cover what is a zone master key. We will look at a couple of pin related keys. We will also look at what is a card verification key. The first key that we will look at is zone master key ZMK. We looked at what is a zone in the previous section. So every two parties that forms a zone share a common key called as a zone master key. This zone master key is used to exchange any keys that they want to share subsequently. Like the pin keys or the CVC key, etc. Any keys that is to be encrypted or any key that is to be used for subsequent encryptions will be exchanged under this key. This zone master key is a key encrypting key. The next key that we will look at is zone pin key. As I mentioned, the pin number is never transmitted in clear between two parties. It is transmitted as a pin block. To generate this pin block, there is a pin encryption key. This pin encryption key is further encrypted under a zone master key to generate a zone pin key. So this zone pin key is what is used to generate a pin block from a pin number. A zone pin key is a data encrypting key. Now let us look at an example. Let's see what happens when we enter a pin number in a terminal. The terminal and the acquirer have their own ZPK. So when we enter a pin number in a terminal, it is transmitted under a ZPK to the acquirer. The acquirer and the scheme share a separate ZPK. So acquirer then translates the, that pin block encrypted under ZPK1 to a different ZPK, ZPK2. So the pin block is translated from one ZPK to another. Scheme does the same thing. The scheme and the issuer share a separate ZPK3. So what does scheme do? It translates the pin block from ZPK2 to ZPK3 and then sends it to the issuer. So this is an example of a ZPK. The next key that we will look at is pin verification key. A cardholder pin is also never stored in clear as is in an issuing platform. It is stored as a pin offset or a pin block. This pin offset or a pin block is generated using this key called as a PVK, a pin verification key. A PVK is a data encrypting key. I have covered at breadth about pins and different types of pin offset and pin block in a different video, the link to which will appear as I speak. The next key that we will look at is CVK. CVC1 and CVC2 that we all know which is printed in the magnetic stripe or in the back of the plastic. The CVC is generated whenever a new card is generated. To generate a CVC we require the card number, the expiry date and the service code and this card verification key. There are separate keys for CVC1 and CVC2. Again I have covered about CVC at breadth in a different video the link to which will appear as I speak again. You can view that video if you need about this more in detail. Some closing comments. I have only covered few important keys. I have just scratched the surface here. There are a lot of keys in the world of EMV which I will try to cover in subsequent videos. And all the keys that I have covered here are symmetric keys. I have not spoken of asymmetric keys. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you liked it. If you learned something new from it, please do click the like button and subscribe to the channel. I would love to hear your comments as well, so please do comment. Thank you.